we started a sermon series last week called Messy Spirituality. And uh, it's based on a book by a dude named Mike Iaconelli. And I have books available um, right here. If you want a book, it's like, well, we're just going to charge you five bucks. Um, I don't know. It looks like it says twelve ninety nine, so it's a steal. Uh, if you are interested in one of these books, uh, throw some cash in the box there and, and take your book. Um, I would encourage, it's easy read. Uh, it's a book, as I mentioned last week, a book that someone gave me a while ago, and I don't remember who or when, but it's one of those books that uh, you put, you read through it, and you're like, oh, oh, yeah, okay. And then you kind of put it away, and you kind of, eventually, you, it, for whatever reason, it kind of comes back around, or you go back to it, and you read through it again, and you go, oh, I didn't, or I, I missed that the first time, or oh, man, look at that, or whatever. Um, and so it's, it's an easy read. You could probably rip through it in a week, and if that's something that you're, you know, interested in, or you find as we go through the series through the month of January to be one that you, that kind of piques your interest, or uh, you want to maybe go a little more in depth or read the book, there they are, five bucks. Feel free to, to grab them if you want to. Um, we're going to, if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn to, to Luke chapter 18. There's Bibles there in the pew. If you don't, you know my little spiel. Maybe you've heard it before. If you don't have your own Bible, let me know, and I'll make sure that we get you a Bible to have and to hold and cherish and do all those things. That underline, fold pages, make notes, do all that kind of stuff. If it happens to be the shiny red one in the pew, then that's our gift to you, and you can, you can take that. But I trust that you'll find it will be helpful to, to have your Bibles with you. Luke chapter 18. So we started this messy spirituality series last week, and if you remember, and if you don't, no biggie, because I'm going to fill you in. Last week, we spent some time talking about how life is messy. I, I cannot imagine that there is one single person sitting in this room who would not admit, recognize, and say, yes, life is messy. You can think, whether you're in the mess right now, or you can think at past times in your life when, you, when life has been messy for you. And we talked about how sometimes the mess is of our own choosing, isn't it? It's something that we've done, something that we said, something we didn't do or something we didn't say that has caused a mess. And then there are other times when we're, we've kind of been thrust into a, a messy part of life, haven't we? By someone else's actions or inactions, words or non-words. And we find ourselves going, man, this is, what the heck, this is messy. Where did this happen? Where did this come from? How did this happen? And here we are. We talked about managing the mess, what that looks like, and how oftentimes we try to do it ourselves, and we fail, don't we? I mean, nine times out of ten, we try to, to manage the mess. We look at, we're, our, we see this thing that's happening in our lives, and it's kind of falling apart. And we're trying to just scramble to sort of, kind of just contain it, to put it back together. And it just, maybe sometimes we even make it worse, don't we? I mean, if we're honest. And we try to work and, and manage this mess, and we recognize that we can't do it. We can't manage the mess. Sometimes, a lot of the times, we fail in doing that. And then we talked about, well, okay, so yes, life is messy. Well, what, what does that mean for you and I as we think of this idea of messy spirituality? What does that mean when we think about the idea of trying to follow Jesus, trying to be a Christian when life is messy? And we talked about what happens when Jesus meets our mess. And there was some hope and excitement around the idea and the thought that Jesus actually shows up. That he isn't repelled by or deterred by our mess. He doesn't look at me and go, Matt, you are a mess. And until you get some things figured out, I'm going to, you know, why don't we, let's touch base in a, in a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years, after you kind of deal with some of those things, and then we can talk. No, we read throughout scripture that Jesus hangs out with people who are messy. And he gets right in the mix, doesn't he? He's not somehow turned off by their mess. He's not turned off by the mess in your life. Your life is messy, and Jesus is still pursuing you despite your mess. Even within your mess, Jesus, as we kind of talked about this imagery or this, we had this, this idea of Jesus chasing after you in your mess. Maybe even because of the mess, right? Because we've tried to clean it up and we just can't do it. 
And Jesus is going, no, I'm not, I'm not waiting for you to get things put together and figured out, and then I'm going to, then I'll have a relationship with you. I, no, I want you and your mess. And I want you and your mess now because I want to help you clean it up. So we talked about how when Jesus meets our mess, how that, some things start to happen, right? Things get real. And we kind of have to admit or, or, you know, recognize that, yes, life is messy. Yes, some of us have significant messes in our lives, even right now as we sit here. And we kind of start to get real with ourselves. We get real with Jesus. We get real with each other. And we kind of see how the mess starts to become a little more manageable, I guess, to deal with, to navigate through, not because of us, but because of Jesus. So we talked about some of those things last week. This week, I wanted to spend a little time talking about this idea of what it really means to be spiritual. Now, many of you know I'm usually a clicker guy, and you'll see points that go through the PowerPoint, and that, that's not, I'm not going to have that for you this evening. Um, so if you're taking notes, I would encourage you to do that, and you can follow along that way if you, if you so choose. Uh, I'm going to try to get all this series up on, on the blog here in, in the next couple weeks. Um, but tonight, I kind of want to talk about this idea of what spirituality really looks like. Because you can go to any bookstore, you can flip on, um, you know, TV, and you can hear all sorts of people talking about what spirituality is, what it looks like, what it means, how it plays out in your life, and all of these different things. And you need to know up front that when I talk about, and I use that word spirituality, I am talking exclusively about what it looks like and what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. Okay? I'm not talking about any sort of self-help things. Um, I'm not talking about Eastern, Western philosophies. None of, none of those things is what I'm talking about when I use this, when I use this word spirituality, and especially as we talk about this messy spirituality and how sometimes following Jesus can be messy because we're messy and it's hard, right? I mean, if anyone has really tried to follow Christ for any length of time, I would guess you would admit and say, yes, it is hard. For various reasons, it's hard. So tonight I want to talk about this idea of, of spirituality. What it really, I think, uh, like what I'd, I would like to suggest, what it, some of the aspects of what it really looks like. So Luke chapter 18. I'm reading from the NIV this evening, so it might be a little bit different than, than the Red Bible there if you're using that. Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 35. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. I mean, basically they just said, shut up. You're annoying. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, verse 43 tells us, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Now, when we begin to look at this idea of spirituality, what it really looks like, I think there's a couple things that we kind of mentioned last week that I want to reiterate for you because I think it's important to note. When you look at or think about this idea of of spirituality, we're reminded that anyone can be spiritual. Anyone can choose to follow Christ. I mean, if you can remember Jesus being nailed to a tree next to two other guys that were hanging on the cross. I mean, convicted felons. And you remember what Jesus told one of them, right? Even today you will be with me in paradise. I mean, anyone can be spiritual. 
Spirituality begins now, even in the mess of our lives. It's not a sort of thing that you have to say, because we play this game, don't we? Where we go, well, I need to get some stuff figured out, and then I'll get serious about my relationship with God. You know, I need to deal with this, and then I'll get serious about church. And Jesus is suggesting that it's, no, now. Anyone, now. We're reminded that Jesus cares more about desire than competence. And I don't know about you, but that is, that's a huge amen for me. I mean, the 12 guys that Jesus hung out with didn't, they struggled to get it figured out. They spent three years living with Jesus and still couldn't get it figured out. Jesus is more about, is more concerned about the desire than the competence. Spirituality requires authenticity and it requires trust. We talked a little bit, you heard me mention earlier how we, we talked last week about getting real. When Jesus meets our mess, things get real. There's an authenticity that has to come with spirituality. I mean, the best spirituality you can hope to have if you're playing the pretend game is simply just a, a sort of wannabe pretend spirituality. And so with it comes authenticity. And then there's a trust that we have to trust that God is not only, not only present in, but can use the mess of our lives.